Coast Oyster Company with Shelby Bassett. So Shelby, at this time, you can feel free to share your screen and uh, start your presentation. Sorry, <laughs> I had to unmute myself. Okay, let me get it big screen. Okay, hi, my name is Shelby Bissett, and I'm pitching the first oyster mariculture business in South Texas called the South Coast Oyster Company, where we will bring food from the tide to table. I am a UTRGB alumni, student, and staff. I have two degrees in biology and am a current policy student of the MPA program which has led to my interest in the new mariculture legislation that passed in Texas in 2020. I also want to thank Jim Birchback, my SCORE mentor for his mentorship and the biologists at Texas Parks and Wildlife who have been awesome at answering any of my questions. This company will be the first mariculture business in the lower Laguna Madre and our model basically follows the life cycle of the oyster, which we see here on the image on the right. <clears throat> We start at the hatchery stage where we take spat or baby oysters from the local wild stock. Then they grow in an aquarium setting, which is the nursery stage, where they will be until they reach one inch. And that is when they are big enough to be put into the cages in the bay on five acres. And so they will be in the grow out stage until they reach market size, which is two and a half inches for harvest. They will be served to local families and restaurants of the Rio Grande Valley and beyond. Additionally, we will collect the shell back from the restaurants and invite the community to participate in oyster reef restoration events. Some needs to highlight are that there are no local oysters. Most are grown and imported from other Gulf states. Starting this industry in Texas is important for feeding the future as populations are expected to grow. This is new legislation, as I mentioned, and we are the last Gulf state to start this. The lease application is quite complex and will require environmental expertise. The startup costs are estimated to be 60,000 per acre, and we are looking at a five acre lease. This idea fits into our community well, in that we have a demand for this food source and environmental service. Oysters also help clean the water and the habitat restoration program will promote environmental stewardship within the community. This idea is not new. It is just a new business in a new place. The growing method we will use is widely used on the Atlantic and Gulf Coast. And this will allow us to pr provide locally grown fresh oysters to Texans at a wholesale cost of 25 cents to 50 cents per oyster. We are searching for a handful of investors to contribute to the 300,000 startup cost with an expectation of growing 2.5 million oysters annually. So with that, I'd like to thank you all for listening. And if I'm lucky enough to win any proceeds from this competition, it will go towards the initial lease application and site data collection required for the state. Shelby, Shelby is there any this large is impact on our ocean uh, environment, especially for the birds. Uh, if you have five acres of, um, you know, wire in the water, how will it affect all the birds down here in the region? Um, so a lot of this uh, other environmental effects are mitigated through Texas Parks and Wildlife. So they actually designate what parts of the bay are available to do this. And they have uh, boundaries, like a certain distance uh, between say like a rookery island where birds may be nesting or seagrass habitat, there's a, a certain amount of space that you have to have. Um, that's why all the data collection is important beforehand for the lease application. So they know what's going on in the area where you propose. And were there other questions? I asked a couple of people at one time. Yeah, are there any large seafood companies that are coming into this given that the news was, was pretty recent? There are some I hear of stories, um, but it, I haven't heard of anything in this area. 
Um, I've been talking with the biologists at Texas Parks and Wildlife and they've gotten a few phone calls, uh, but no one has submitted an application in our area. Um, so it's still very new. And um, I think uh, in the upper coast near maybe <laughs> Texas A&M Galveston, there's a hatchery up there and they have more, uh, I guess, promotion of this new industry. Have we done any financials on, on this proposal, on this project? How much you, you know, your revenues, your expenses, I mean, after the, it gets done? Um, so we just kind of know the startup cost with the, because obviously all that equipment you saw in the, the picture in the water, um, that's a, in the initial startup cost. cost. But that equipment lasts uh, very long. It's, it's made of mostly plastics, um, and so it will not degrade, and you can use it year to year. So, you know, to start, it would be 300000 for five acres. Um, you're looking at a revenue of anywhere from like a half a million to a million, if we get those two and a half million uh, oysters. However, at the years after that, you're only looking at operating expenses, you know, boat maintenance, uh, paying any workers that go out there. So uh, we expect the operating costs to be less in the long term. Question for you, Steph. Are there any biological implications for caging the oysters, uh, similar to what you may be caging chickens that that you're aware of? So uh, the reason for caging them actually makes them presentable for oysters on the half shell. So these are gonna be the ones that are served. What the cages allow for is less uh, algae growth and things will happen to them. There's less predation by crabs and other organisms. And it, what you do with the cages, you actually turn them every week or so. And that makes the oysters very pretty and round. So a wild oyster doesn't look as good as a grown oyster that you get when you order on the half shell. Have you, have you done any taste tests? I know your you're salty, your water is more salty. Um, could you speak to that? Uh, well, <laughs> I've done personal taste tests. I've gone to oyster bars in Austin and things, and they will actually serve. Uh, some from different regions of the country. And I love Gulf oysters because they're much more salty than um, say an oyster from South Carolina. Um, so I haven't been able to test the difference between like say the lower Laguna Madre to somewhere up in Galveston Bay. Uh, but yeah, we're fortunate to have like really tasty salty oysters here in the Gulf. Doesn't it take several years for these oysters to come to the state where you can sell them or is it fairly quick? Um, it does take some time. Uh, what we're working with here is that we have really warm water and we have a longer growing season than some of your eastern coast states. It does take, uh, I think it's about six to eight months until they're that two and a half inches. Um, so it could be, you know, we might not get revenue until a year out. Uh, what's the uh, current oyster demand here in the uh, RGB uh, area? So that was hard for me to measure, and I don't have an exact amount, but I did reach out to restaurants uh, here in El Padre Island and Port Isabel and asked them, you know, what was the demand like? And in a place like Joe's Oyster Bar, they're going to be selling thousands of oysters in an evening. Um, so... <laughs> Okay, guys. Well, thank you so much, Shelby, for that really great presentation. Uh, now we, up next, we